My brothers and sisters, comrades, uh, greetings from the Fire Brigade Union. Now, Kevin McGuire earlier said that the police had said there was 100,000 on this march. Well, my delegation haven't even reached the parkers yet, so I'd say to our colleagues in the police that there's some problem with numeracy. Perhaps it's down to the education cuts that have already been in place. There's far, far more than that on this demonstration today. That's what politicians like praising our members when we turn out to fires, floods, explosions and so on. But at the same time, they are devastating our service up and down the country. They are closing fire stations, getting rid of fire engines, getting rid of firefighters' jobs. Just this week, we hear in the press that 17 fire stations in London, in the capital city, are under threat of closure and 600 firefighters' jobs to go in the capital city. That's an utter disgrace. It's the same story all over the country, in all our towns and cities, and that will mean when David Cameron says he'll protect frontline services, what planet is he on? Because that will mean it will take longer and longer when you dial 999 for firefighters to come out and deal with that emergency. What an absolute and utter scandal. So we urge you to support us in our campaigns as we support everyone in any area of public life defending public services or fighting for a decent wage or fighting to defend their pensions because we don't believe austerity and cuts are necessary at all. Not one cut is necessary. We paid, you paid, your families and your colleagues paid to bail out the banks. You paid once and now you're being asked to pay again through seeing your, your wages fall, your pensions ripped up and your jobs and futures destroyed. Well, instead of bailing out the banks, I say we should take them over and run them as a democratic public service. We've got a government, we've got a government of the rich, by the rich and for the rich. And we need people fighting for our people as strong as they do for theirs. We will need to fight of our lives over the next period. And that will mean industrial action. It will mean greater and greater coordination and generalised action. And that won't just come from the top, that will only come if that's discussed and debated in every single workplace across the UK. We will need not just trade unions involved, we want our other people, young people, unemployed people, pensioners and students, we need community action. And yes, I believe we need direct action. If they're going to close our hospitals, if they're going to close our youth centres or our schools, then I think it's perfectly reasonable that people step in and say, you're not closing them, we're occupying them to defend them. After all, isn't that a big society in action? Us standing up for ourselves and defending our communities. These people will tell us there's no alternative. Well, they've told us that throughout history. If we'd listened to them in the past, you never would have won the right to vote. You never would have won the right to be in a trade union. We never would have won our health service or our education service. So don't listen to them when they say there's no alternative. We've only ever made progress when we've stood up ourselves and said we set in our own alternative and then we fought for it. That's the challenge today and going forward. Thank you very much.